Hello and welcome back to my channel, Sunshine Lorena. So as you can see, there's a sack of books next to me. Um, oops, I did it again. I bought some more books. Yeah, basically. This is a book haul. This is a book haul. I bought some more books. There are a variety of genres in this. Um, there are a couple charity shop finds. I am loving the charity shop finds at the moment for books. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to take you through the books I've bought recently and yeah, just speak about them a little bit. Let me know if you've read any of them. Um, did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? And yeah, let me know if you ever find great charity shop finds because I'm always interested in people's charity shop finds for books. Honestly, it just got a couple of good ones in here as you will see just now but yeah I'm gonna get to it get through them and I'm I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and not buy books for a little while I'm not on an official book buying ban I'm not gonna do that to myself but I'm gonna try and make myself read more of the books I actually own <laughs> so let's get into it the first few are like bookshop favourites, I've, like, I've seen them around quite a bit. Um, so, the first three are charity shop books. First one is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is all over booktube, um, you've probably seen loads of people reading it. I did buy a Kindle edition um, for 99 pence, it was like a monthly deal they had like a couple of months ago um, and I hadn't gotten to it yet but I saw this in the charity shop for 50 pence so I was like well course physical copy for 50 pence I still have only spent one pound fifty on this book so that's great and it's still in pretty good condition the spine doesn't have creases at all ah oh, don't we love to see an uncreased spine um so yeah pretty good condition this is a YA murder mystery I believe um yes it's following a closed case and I think something happens and the, the main character um, is investigating or something. I don't know too much. And I don't want to too much when it comes to murder mysteries, thrillers, etc. I kind of like only known a vague amount of information. Um, but yeah, 50 pence. Great. And if I like this, then I can go on with the rest of the series, which would be great. Next up is The Family Upstairs. And it's by Lisa, Lea, Lisa Jewell. Um, I have managed to not read any Lisa Jules books even though I read a lot of thrillers. <clears throat> I have a couple more of her books on my Kindle that I want to get to and read as well and this one isn't as in great um, condition as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, the spine is creased a little bit, I don't know if you can see. Um, pages aren't the best but again 50 pence. I'm not going to complain. Um, so it's one family, two, one house, two families, three bodies. So I think it's like a double story. Um, so be careful who you let in. In a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea, a baby is awake in her cot, well fed and cared for. She's happily waiting for someone to pick her up. In the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scrawled note. They've been dead for several days. Who has been looking after the baby and where did they go? Great, great premise. Looking forward to picking that one up because I'm loving my thrillers. I tend to pick up isolated thrillers, so it's good that I'm going to get a different thriller experience. Next one is a booktube, bookstagram, booktok favourite. Like I've seen it all over. And that is It Ends With Us and it's by Colleen Hoover. Again, charity shop find, different one this time. So it was 79 pence, but still not going to complain about that. Again, it is a pretty good spine, ever so slightly creased, in great condition. Um, and I feel like you never just see Colleen Hoover's books around, so I was like, oh, I have to snap that up. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know much about this book. Um, I read Verity back in like February, March time, which is a romance th thriller, which I believe it wasn't her, it's not her usual style. I think it just tends to be romances she um, write, reads, ah, romances that she writes. Um, so yeah, I don't know too much, but 
yeah, romance. Um, I have been enjoying my romances a little bit more and Colleen Hoover seems to be a firm favourite with people so looking forward to that. Next one, and I really like this cover, that is The Shadow of the Wind and it's by Carlos Torres Zafron. Um, and yeah, I've, again, I've seen this around a little bit in booktube, bookstagram, etc. Um, and like I said, I love, I love this cover. I don't know if you can see. Gorgeous. Um, it's also part of a series. I think there's another two or three books in it. And I know it involves um, a book and an author. Um, it's set in Spain. Um, and it's going to read a little bit of the premise because, again, it's not one that I know too much of, but I was really intrigued and I want to see what it's all about and if I enjoy it I can go on with the, the series because I find that I don't tend to read that many series and yeah I think it's nice to have them especially now that I've finished the Neapolitan Quartlet I don't really have a series on the go so um, one cold morning in 1945 a man brings his 10 year old son Daniel to a labyrinth library of forg forgotten titles hidden in an old city of Barcelona allowed to choose one book Daniel puts Pulls out The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carax. Carax. Um, but as, he pulls out The Shadow of the Wind. But as Daniel rose up, several people seem inordinately interested in his find. What begins as a case of literary curiosity turns into a race to discover the truth and life and death of Julian Carax and to save those he left behind. Since The Shadow of the Wind's first publication, okay, no, that's actually about the actual book. But yeah, it's like a book about a book about an author, which I love the idea about reading a book about a book, you know, and the author, which is great and sounds fun. Next one, um, actually it was a blind date with a book, I still have the cover, so I um, I unwrapped this in a reading vlog, um, so yeah, I was at the shop, I was walking past and I saw they had like these book blind dates with a book, and I read a few of them and decided on this one, um, and that is, ends up being um, the the plus one pact and it's by Portia McIntosh and um, it's a romance and yes it's set across summer um our main character apparently is run out of men and she makes a pact with someone um and so for the endless amount of summer um events that they have they're going to go together and pretend they're together as far as what I understand from this again don't want to know too much um because yeah, romances you always know a little bit more, but you're still intrigued. Also, the audiobook is on the Listen Now section of Audible, which I currently have as a subscription. So I want to try and get to this sooner rather than later, because then I can use the audiobook as well. And it's not too chunky, whereas the last few have been a bit chunkier. This is under 300 pages, which is great. I don't read that many under 300 pages, so excellent. Speaking of books under 300 pages, I have Mrs. Dalloway and this is by Virginia Woolf. Um, I bought this um, because, well I want to read it, <laughs> um, because it's on the Rory Gilmore list and again I feel like I'm seeing this every video now is I said I was going to read 20 books off the Rory Gilmore reading list and I have, I am failing, I am failing that. So this is a nice little small one that is like 135 pages or something. Um, yeah, it's, all I know is it's set all in one day. Um, the main character is Cl Cla Cla Clarissa Dalloway and she's given a party and it's just everything that happens in this one day and that's all I know about this. And yes, it is actually on my September TBR which will be up on my channel before this video. So yeah, not a spoiler unless you haven't watched that video but yes, I will be reading this in September. Let me know if you have read it and what it's like because I know classics sometimes can be a little bit hit or miss depending on them but they're always a classic for a reason aren't they? Next, the last four books here I actually just fe I featured in my Come Shopping With Me video uh, where I went to Bath to do some book shopping so if you like watching people you know scenes of bookshops then go and watch it um, so I'm not going to talk about these ones too much because I did go into more detail about them and their premises during that video but I will link if you want to go and see that but the first one is Eleanor Ferranti The Lying Life of Adults and I got this at Mr B's Emporium um, which is like a well-known independent bookshop 
Um, like I said before, I've just finished the Napolitan Quartlet series, so I wanted to read another book by her, and this is her latest release. Um, and again, it's set in Naples. This is a standalone, and yeah, I mean, her writing's beautiful. I want to read another one, and if you haven't checked out her books, do because she is a really great writer, and the fact that she's managed to stay anonymous is just crazy to me. Like, no one knows who the author actually is. Like, and she, she's like famous, you know, and that's incredible. Lots of guessing games and stuff going on for people um, to work out if it was her. I'm just moving that back. And yeah, okay, next I went to Persephone Books and I picked up one of their Persephone classics. So they always are in this grey. I picked up The Blank Wall by um, Elizabeth Senex Holding. Um, and you'll be able to see the inside is really nice it's set in like the 1940s it is a thriller it's about a mother and daughter and um i think there's some blackmail going on or something and yeah it sounded really intriguing and oh in case you don't know persephone books well, they were in london they've moved to bath but they're also a publishing house not just a bookshop and they print mostly out of print um women's 20th century literature um so yeah you're not gonna just find this on like and like your normal you're not gonna just find this everywhere you know it's the only print so many and it's a nice idea that they're bringing books back to life that would have been forgotten um and i love that concept so yeah great let me know if you read any persephone classics because if i enjoy that one i'm definitely well not just if i enjoy it i definitely want to kind of explore that more then we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. This is the second, and I know I said about the series thing, I forgot about this. This is the second book in the series. I have the first one here, which is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Um, and it's about a cafe that's set in, that is in Tokyo, um, involves time travel, but it's a little bit, it's light on the fantasy, I have to say. It's, it's a very light element. Um, so in the catches, you have to get back before your coffee's cold. And yes, in the first one, you followed four different Kind of stories of people the the staff and everything stays the same and you're also following them but you get to see four different people's reasons for time traveling and why and how that all works out so i assume this follows the same sort of format and yeah it was just lovely that first one so i'm really looking forward to the second one i believe there is a third one in the series but i don't think it's translated yet um and then my very last one sorry my voice is going a little bit <clears throat> And the very last one I have here is Cujo by Stephen King. And this is the new printing that Hodder are doing. Um, they did other, you're not gonna get to see, are you? You can see here, I have one of the Hodder, um, the old Hodder ones, um, which people like collect, I have like rainbow spines and stuff, but they're doing a reprinting. I don't know if the spines and the colors are different on these, but I thought that's, it's a nice looking cover, isn't it? Um, but anyway, I, Basically, one of my goals is to read five kings this year. I've read three, um, so this will be my fourth one, maybe. I might pick up another one, because I, I'm like that. Um, and then also, it's on the Royal Girl, Girl Model list, so that will be, yeah, that'll be great. it would be ticking off two things, two of my goals there. And yeah, all I know is it involves some sort of rabid dog, and people are trapped in a car or something. Don't know too much, don't want to know too much, because I want to appreciate those story and those horror vibes and be like surprised i've never seen the film either and yeah i have been enjoying reading king king books and i have been reading mostly his old stuff i've only read the institute which is a newer one but the rest have all been his older um his older books that he's written and yeah classic king now there is one that i don't physically have here in my possession and that's because it's on the way to me um I was hoping to have it to actually film it in this video but I don't have time to film this another time so we're just gonna have to speak about it now. Um, so that is The Winter People and it's by Jennifer McCon. Um, now this is a horror book I believe. It's one that Gabby reads has read and she liked it um, and yes it, it's a horror book Winter People. I'm probably not gonna pick this up until like November, December, maybe even January because the cover is all like snowy and it just gives you that those vibes you know gives you the vibes so um 
West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is that of Sarah Harrison Shea, who in 1908 was found in a field, found dead in a field behind her house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. Now in present day, 19-year-old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother, Alice, and her younger sister, Fawn. Alice has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that suddenly proves frivolous when Ruthie wakes up one morning to find that Alice has vanished without a trace. Searching for clues, she is startled to find a copy of Sarah Harrison's Shea's diary hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked deeper into the mystery of Sarah's fate, she discovers that she's not the only person who's desperately looking for someone that they've lost, but she may be the only one who can stop the history from repeating itself. So it sounds really intriguing, and um, like I said, it's, I know it's like horror is the genre, so maybe, I know I said maybe later on in the year, but maybe it's one to pick up in October for like, spooky vibes you know um and that is it that is all the books there was 11 10 yeah 11 okay um and i'm hopefully gonna have that one physically in my hand soon and i'm just gonna stay out of bookshops for a while so that i can actually read these and i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna do one of those videos where i just speak about every single book on my physical tbr so then we can actually know i mean it doesn't, I don't think there's that many, but then I think I'm going to be surprised because there's 11 already here. So anyway, look out for that at some point, probably September. And yeah, thank you. Let me know if you've read any of these. Did you enjoy them? And yeah, I will hopefully see you in the next one. Comment, like, subscribe. Bye.